She's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see her Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Carl J. So this is my vlog exercise number 2. Vlog series where I feature exercises and workouts that you can do during quarantine. So this time, we're going to conduct uh, health-related physical exercises. So without further ado, let's get started. What is health-related fitness? Health-related fitness or HRF is theoretically defined as a multidimensional construct containing the components cardiorespiratory endurance, muscular strength, muscular endurance, flexibility, and body composition. The first component is cardiovascular endurance, also known as cardiorespiratory endurance or aerobic fitness. It refers to your body's ability to efficiently and effectively intake oxygen and deliver it to your body's tissues by the way of the heart, lungs, arteries, vessels, and veins. By engaging in regular exercise that challenges your heart and lungs, you can first maintain or even improve the efficient delivery and uptake of oxygen to your body system. Second, enhance cellular metabolism. And third, is the physical challenges of everyday life. Muscular endurance. It is one of the two factors that contribute to overall muscular health. Think of muscular endurance as a particular muscle group's ability to continuously contract against a given resistance. Long distance cyclists offer a clear example. To continuously pedal a bike over a long distance, open up steep inclines, cyclists have to develop fatigue resistant muscles in their legs and glutes. These are evidence of a high level of muscular endurance. Likewise, holding a plant to develop core strength is another example of muscular endurance. The longer you're able to contract your abdominals and hold your body in a steady position, the greater endurance you have through your hips, abdominals, and shoulders. Muscular strength. While well, muscular endurance refers to how fatigue resistant a particular muscle group is, muscular strength refers to the amount of force a particular muscle group can produce in one or all out effort. Like muscular endurance, muscular strength is a muscle group specific. In other words, you may have incredibly strong glutes but comparatively weak deltoids, or incredibly strong pectoral muscles but comparatively weak hamstrings. This is why a well-balanced strength training program that targets all of your major muscle groups is so important. Flexibility. It refers to the range of motion you have around a given joint. Like muscular strength and endurance, flexibility is joint specific. For instance, you may have very flexible shoulders but tight and inflexible hamstrings or hips. Flexibility is important at any age. It plays a role in unhindered movement and can affect your balance, coordination, and agility. Maintaining a full range of motion through your major joints can reduce the likelihood of injury and enhance athletic performance. As you get older, the importance of flexibility becomes even clearer. Think of individuals who are elderly. Many may walk with a shuffle or have a hard time reaching their arms over their heads. This may affect the quality of life, making it more challenging to perform activities of daily living, such as reaching items on high shelves, taking up items off the floor, or simply moving effectively to cast your balance if they start to fall. And lastly, the body composition, or your body's ratio of fat mass to fat-free mass, is the final component of health-related physical fitness because high levels of fat mass are associated with negative health outcomes such as heart disease and type 2 diabetes, attaining and maintaining a healthy body composition is a goal of just about all regular exercise routines. Before we jump to the activity, let us warm up our bodies first. The 
first activity that we're going to conduct is sit and reach. The sit and reach test is a common measure of flexibility and specifically measures the flexibility of the lower back and hamstring muscles. This test is important as because tightness in this area is implicated in lumbar lordosis, forward pelvic tilt, and lower back pain. This test was first described by Wells and Williams in 1952 and is now widely used as a general test of flexibility. The materials needed in this activity are measuring tool for the measurement of your reach and tape that will serve as the mark where you will place your heels. First thing first, you need to make sure that you don't wear any shoes while performing this activity because it will add an extra inch to your result. Make sure that your heels are on the tape. Have at least 12 inches apart for the legs. And then you're going to put your hand over the other like this. And make sure that your legs are flat on the ground and not like this. And that's it. First attempt. Here we go. Second attempt. And lastly, my third attempt. The second activity that we're going to conduct is shuttle run. A shuttle run is a dynamic exercise that targets the quadriceps, hamstrings, gluteus muscles, and calves. It also works the hips, obliques, serratus, abdominal muscles, and the lower back. Shuttle run will help develop speed, power, agility, and coordination. Here are the materials needed to conduct this activity. First, the small boots, the objects that you will grab while you're running. Second, a measuring tool for measuring the distance of the starting line to the finish line, and a timer for your results. In this activity, we're going to run back and forth and grab these boots. This is my first attempt. This is my second attempt. This is my third attempt. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something from me and Special thanks to my cousin, she helped me to film this vlog. You can follow her on her social media accounts there. So, thank you and God bless again.